Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. In this part, we will see the introduction, the classification of hypertensive disorders in pregnancy, the diagnosis of hypertension, proteinuria, and finally about the gestational hypertension. Separate discussion on preeclampsia, eclampsia, and the chronic hypertension will be on the subsequent videos. Let us start from the introduction. Hypertension is among the most common medical complications of pregnancy. It occurred in 5 to 10 percent of all pregnancies and is a major cause of maternal and perinatal mortality and morbidities worldwide. It is one of the deadly threats of the cause of maternal death worldwide along with hemorrhage and infection. It is responsible for 16 percent of maternal deaths worldwide. Of this, majority of the deaths occurred in developing countries. Studies found that around 50% of maternal deaths due to hypertensive disorder of pregnancy is said to be preventable. There are several maternal complications associated with hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. Of this, cerebrovascular accident, congestive heart failure, acute kidney injury, the liver failure, DIC, and the pulmonary edema are the commonest. The fatal and the neonatal complications are also increased in pregnancy is complicated by hypertension. Of this, prematurity is the commonest. Hypertension is among the commonest cause of iatrogenic prematurity. And the hypertension increased the risk of intrauterine fatal growth restriction, it increased the risk of intrauterine fatal death, it increased the risk of abruption, and finally increased risk of neonatal death. There are a different classification system was used to classify hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. The commonly used one is the one proposed by American College of Obstetrician and Gynecologist, which was revised in 2013. It classifies into four, the preeclampsia and the eclampsia. This is responsible for majority of maternal and perinatal mortalities and morbidities associated with hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. The other is chronic hypertension. We define chronic hypertension in three ways. The one is if hypertension diagnosed before pregnancy, we said chronic hypertension or hypertension diagnosed before 20 weeks of gestation, we call it as chronic hypertension or hypertension during pregnancy. If it is persist after 12 weeks postpartum, we call it as chronic hypertension. One of the commonest complications of chronic hypertension in pregnancy is the development of superimposed preeclampsia. This is also one category in this classification. The other is gestational hypertension that we are going to discuss in this part. So hypertension is diagnosed empirically when appropriately taken systolic blood pressure greater than or equal 140 millimeter of mercury or diastolic blood pressure greater than or equal 90 millimeter of mercury two times at least four hours apart but not more than one week or a single measurement can be suffice if the woman previously took antihypertensive medications. So this level of 140 by 90 cut point were used to diagnose hypertension in non-pregnant adults since 1950s. This was this cut point were arbitrarily taken by insurance companies. Then from, from thereafter, we were using to diagnose hypertension <coughs> in pregnant as well as non-pregnant population. The previously used criteria, which was the increased systolic blood pressure by 30 mm of mercury, or diastolic blood pressure by 50 mm of mercury from the mid-pregnancy, even though the absolute value is less than 140 by 90, were no longer used to define hypertension. This is because of even in normal pregnancy, the blood pressure increased from the mid-pregnancy so that it will these criteria were no longer used because of this reason. The other is the concept of delta hypertension. That means a sudden rise in mean arterial blood pressure, even though the cut point is within the normal range, may signify preeclampsia, but it is not used as a diagnostic criteria. But these women have an increased risk of help syndrome and eclampsia and the need to be followed during the course of pregnancy. The other is the diagnosis of severe hypertension. We said severe hypertension if systolic blood pressure is greater than or equal 160 millimeter of mercury or 
diastolic blood pressure greater than or equal 110 mm of mercury two times at least 30 minutes apart and uh, a single measurement if the woman is taking previously antihypertensive drugs so in this case we don't wait a woman uh, to repeat the blood pressure for four hours since uh, immediate treatment is needed within 30 minutes to prevent maternal cerebrovascular and cardiovascular complications appropriate blood pressure measurement is essential for the diagnosis of hypertension so when we said appropriate bp measurement the following things should be considered one is the properly functioning and calibrated bp apparatus or bp machine is very important properly trained personnel should take the blood pressure and appropriate calf size should be selected for the body habitus of the patient when we say the appropriate calf size the the bp calf blade the length of the bp calf blade should be 80 percent of the upper arm circumference and the length of the calf blade should be at least 40 to 46 percent of the upper arm circumference correct patient positioning is also very important in pregnant women the bp should be taken in a sitting position or 30 degree lateral recumbent position with back supported in pregnant women the blood pressure should never be taken in a supine position because of the risk of supine hypotension because of compression by the gravity thrust especially after 24 weeks of gestation in a sitting position the woman should sit especially as outpatient for five minutes before measurement and the legs should not be crossed and the back should be supported so during measurement the arm should be supported at the level of the heart this is very important if left unsupported it increased the blood pressure by 10 to 12 millimeter of mercury because of the hydrostatic pressure induced by gravity so as a principle the blood pressure initially should be taken from both arm and it should be compared then the blood pressure should be taken the one arm which have high blood pressure but in general since the right arm had high blood pressure then the left we take commonly from the right arm proteinuria is the an objective marker that reflects system-wide vascular endothelial injury resulting in endothelial leak usually appears late in the course of the disease commonly after hypertension sometimes it appears earlier in the course of the disease especially in preeclampsia the definition of proteinuria is the same during the course of pregnancy whether diagnosed in the first second or third trimester of pregnancy we do have qualitative and quantitative tests for preeclampsia the quantitative tests are 24 hour urine protein greater than or equal 300 mg or a spot urinary protein to creatinine ratio greater than or equal 0.3 and the 12 hours urine protein greater than or equal 165 milligram were used is better test to diagnose proteinuria the qualitative test is urine deep stick greater than or equal plus one at least two times four hours apart but not more than seven days this qualitative test the deep stick is not a good measurement of urine protein since there are several factors that affect urinary protein concentration these are contamination with blood bacteria uh, aminotic fluid vaginal discharge in the urine specific graffiti urinary ph exercise and posture can affect urine protein concentration so the better tests are the quantitative tests gestational hypertension is defined as hypertension without proteinuria or without even sign and symptoms of endorgan dysfunctions or Plat, I mean, sign and symptoms of endorgan dysfunctions after 20 weeks of gestation in previously normotensive women. In this woman, the BP returns to normal by 12 weeks postpartum, said to be the most frequent cause of hypertension during pregnancy. It affects 6 to 29 percent of nulliparous women and 2 to 4 percent of multiparous women. Some women with gestational hypertension may have undiagnosed chronic hypertension. A woman with gestational hypertension have high risk of progression to preeclampsia. The risk of progression to preeclampsia depends on gestational age at the time of diagnosis of uh, gestational uh, hypertension. So, 
If gestational hypertension diagnosed before 35 weeks of gestation, the risk of progression to preeclampsia reaches around 50%. If it is diagnosed later in the course of the pregnancy, the risk of progression is said to be lower. In general, most of the women with gestational hypertension are diagnosed at or beyond 37 weeks of gestation, so that the overall pregnancy outcome is almost similar to that of normotensive women. But since the risk of the, since the induction of labor is higher in a woman with mild gestational hypertension, the rate of caesarean section is higher in a woman with gestational hypertension compared with the normotensive one. It is classified as mild gestational hypertension and severe gestational hypertension. Since the perinatal mortalities and the maternal morbidity and the mortalities with severe gestational hypertension is almost similar to that of uh, preeclampsia with severe features. So if the woman had severe gestational hypertension, the management is almost similar to that of preeclampsia with severe features. So how do you manage gestational hypertension? So the primary objectives in the management is first the safety of the mother followed by delivery of a mature neonate that do not require prolonged and intensive hospital stay. And most of these women can safely be managed as an outpatient in a daycare or at home. And uh, maternal and fetal surveillance is a backbone for the management. The goal of this surveillance is for earlier detections of progression to severe hypertension or preeclampsia. So during surveillance, we do have, we will evaluate for signs and symptoms of preeclampsia. We should measure blood pressure weekly or twice weekly. The laboratory test like CBC with platelet count, renal function test, liver enzyme should be taken at each perinatal visit that is weekly. And also the fetal surveillance, <clears throat> the fetal kick count daily and the biophysical profile or non-stress test should be taken twice weekly. Restrictions of dietary salt and physical activity doesn't improve the pregnancy outcome so that it is not recommended. Administration of antihypertensive drugs doesn't improve the pregnancy outcome, so it's not also recommended. So with conservative management, if there is no progression to preeclampsia or severe hypertension, the pregnancy can continue until seven weeks of gestation, some say up to 40 weeks of gestation, then termination at seven to 40 weeks of gestation. The induction of labor is a preferred mode of termination of pregnancy. And intrapartum, these women do not require a seizure prophylaxis since the risk of eclampsia is less than one in 500. Thank you for watching. If you are new for this channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to have more videos.